today we're going to be talking about, presenting about our country, Nigeria. So, <laughs> first of all, Nigeria is located in West Africa. And that's it right there. Um, we're bordered to the north by Niger, to the east by Chad and Cameroon, to the west by Benin, a uh, Chinese country, and to the south by the Gulf of Guinea of the Atlantic Ocean. The size of my country is 923,768 kilometers square, and the time difference between here, mm -hmm. the central time, and uh, Nigeria is seven hours, but it can also be six hours depending on the uh, mm -hmm. time change, you know the mm -hmm. time change? Mm -hmm. And it took me 14 hours to fly from Nigeria to Atlanta. So I thought it would be cool to compare the size of my country to um, some popular places. Nigeria is approximately the size of Texas. So it's not, it's just like a state in the US. Um, I also compared it with Turkmenistan, which is about two times, <laughs> two times bigger than Turkmenistan. Um, about two times the size of California nine times the size of South Korea, and uh, yeah, two times smaller than Alaska. So the population. Nigeria is the most populous country in Africa, and it is the seventh most populous in the world. So imagine how small it is, and like, we're like very, we're a lot of people, with a population of 194 million people. So we have 36 <coughs> states in Nigeria, um, Abuja being the central capital territory. Uh, it was actually Lagos before, but I guess because of the population, they moved it to Abuja, and it's uh, it's a purpose-built capital. So it wasn't there wasn't anything there. They built the capital out of. And it's like area. right at the center mm -hmm. of the map. So Lagos. Lagos is the major financial financial center in Nigeria. It's like the home for majority of the headquarters of businesses, the major seaports. Um, the land area is 999.6 kilometers square, and there are 21 people living in Lagos. Mm. Million. 21 million. <laughs> 21 million people. <laughs> 21 million people living in. Lagos uh, is the largest city by population. It's not that big, but by population, it's the largest in Africa and the, the tenth largest in the world. And it's the economic powerhouse of Nigeria. So the weather of Nigeria, we have just two seasons, the rainy season and the dry season. The rainy season lasts from April to October, so that's seven months. And the dry season is from November to March. And Nigeria is a tropical country, so we it's it's like almost always green, and that's how it looks during um rainy season and the dry season when it's very sunny. It's really really hot sometimes. So the average temperature in Nigeria is between 73 degree Fahrenheit and 88 degree Fahrenheit. I know some people be like, oh, it's really hot in Nigeria, and they like in the U.S. it gets to 100 and something. They're like, huh, it doesn't get that hot in my country. <laughs> So uh, that's the average temperature, and I thought it would be important. It was important to talk about the history of my country. It's going to be very brief. So the first set of people to reach the coast of Nigeria were the Portuguese, and uh, by the, in the 15th century they began. They began. <laughs> they began um, slave trade in Nigeria. So they were. They got this middleman who would go capture people from the inland area, and then they would trade them off with like goods from the Portuguese. And by the 18th century, the British became like the power slave traders. They became the leader, the leader of the of slave trade, and they also uh, traded in Nigeria. And I think around 1807, due to like the missionary campaigns against slavery. Um, the British prohibited uh, slave trade, and and they actually uh, made other other people all their other subjects stop slave trade too. 
between 1907 and 1961, we had a civil war going on in my country. And my tribe, the Yoruba people, um, needed help and they didn't know who to ask for help, so they asked the British. And they kind of used that opportunity to settle around um, Lagos area, where my tribe is. And they just gradually like moved inward till they colonized the whole country. So, so they established presence in 1961, and by 1900, 1900, they were they had total control of Nigeria. And by 1901, we became a British protectorate, basically like colony. And on October 1st, 1960, we finally gained our independence. So we were under British rule for about, about 60 years. years. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this is our first prime minister. It's kind of like a president. So that was, that's our first prime minister, um, Tafa Balewa, and that's Queen Elizabeth. She's been alive a long time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the flag of Nigeria and our coat of arms. We, uh, we adopted this to the coat of arms and the flag after our independence. So our country's flag is represented with green and white, and the green represents the fertile land of my country, and the white symbolizes peace and unity. And this is just another way and, uh, you can see this flag, but this is a more official flag. And the coat of arm has seven distinct features. The black shield represents the fertile soil of my country. The two horses represents dignity. The green and white band, the one right here, represents the rich agricultural potential of Nigeria. And the eagle, did I say that already? Mm -hmm. The eagle represents strength. And then the red flowers underneath. This is a species of flower that can be found all over, everywhere in Nigeria. So it's, uh, it represents uh, the beauty of the nation. And the Y band represents the two major rivers in my country, River Niger and River Benue. And the base, the band at the base has the motto of my country, unity and faith, peace and progress. This is the president, uh, Muhammad Buhari. And he's been president for three years, but planning to run for another term. So how the presidential system works in my country is that it's a federal republic with a presidential system. So um, we elect a president that runs for four years and they can rerun for one more term. So they can have a total of eight years. Uh, yeah. Our currency is called Naira and Koba. And those are the notes we have. We have from five Naira to a thousand Naira. And then we have Cobos, but nobody really uses this anymore. Like, we had a recent inflation in my country, and the cheapest thing is like 10 naira. So, imagine having one cobble to make, just, like, to just buy a lollipop or something. Nobody uses this anymore. So, but it's still a thing, but nobody really uses it. So, the symbol of the naira is this, and that's the symbol of the cobble. And because of the, the recent inflation, one dollar is 360 naira. This will get you a decent sized meal and a drink. Like, good quality, like very good meal. Mm -hmm. So, things are really cheap. The GDP in my country is 405.1 billion US dollars, and the unemployment rate is 16%. Which sounds really bad, but... Um, <coughs> like unemployment affects recent like graduates, new graduates, right? But the thing is that the new graduates have found a way to fend for themselves. So they're going into entrepreneurship and a lot of them are doing very good at it. They're doing like small businesses, they're starting up and doing really great. So yeah, they know not to depend on the system. So they're doing really good. Um back in the days we used to use um dowries like this as currency before uh, the currency type of, you know, was introduced. So we use something like this yeah. to trade and all that. If you want, it is $60. <laughs> <laughs> so 
major export, um, Nigeria is you know also known as the giant of Africa, and we have we produce a lot of goods and we export so many goods. One of the major ones is crude oil, as you can see right there. Uh, crude oil was discovered in Nigeria in 1956, and we export you know oil worth of 10 billion um, dollars annually to India. And every day we produce about 2.5 million barrels of crude oil. And from crude oil, you can get petroleum, diesel, gas, and all that. And um, it's a uh, highest producer. Nigeria is the highest producer of um, oil in Africa and the sixth highest in the world. And I believe we would have been richer than Wakanda if you know we managed our resources. <laughs> and we also export and produce um, other things like cocoa, wood, oil seeds. Um, raw hide, skins, leather, aluminum, copper, wood, um, fish, fruits, and nuts. Education. Education is a big deal back home. Like, we were thought that, you know, the only way to survive is education and others. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, we start school roughly at the age of two. I started nursery school at the age of two. It ranges from kindergarten to university. Kindergarten is optional. My mom said I wasn't going to go to kindergarten because she teach me everything I need to know at home instead of wasting money in mm -hmm. the school. And then we have nursery school. Um, it's for three years. Primary school, six years, and secondary school, which is like high school. We have junior secondary and senior secondary school. And then we have the university. We wear uniforms until tertiary level. We're taught to wear uniforms and we dress up all the time. We wear socks and shoes. As you can see, the students wear it there. So, we actually adopted it from the British, so they taught us that and we continued doing that. Um, average Nigerian starts school at the age of two and graduates high school at the age of 16. That's very, very common. Some graduate earlier at the age of 15. You see a graduate from the university at the age of 19 or 20 and you'd be like, what? Um, it's very, very hard to enroll in university, you know, because it's a very populous country. So sometimes you have about 5,000 Africans to university, and they only take about 500 people. And the others just have to figure out what to do next. Uh, it's very expensive, like I said, and private schools are more expensive than government schools. And our schools, we have, uh, like during exams, we have more essay questions than multiple choice, especially in universities. Uh, they drill you, they try to drill you really hard, and it's very competitive. Sometimes the lecturer will be like, open your books, and you can take the exam while your books are open and you never see the answers in the book. So I have about 69% educated people. I just wanted to add that, you know the way in the US, once you're 18, you're free to do whatever you like, like you're basically not under your parents anymore. It's not like that in Nigeria. You're like your parents' children till you're done with college. Like, <laughs> you're under yeah, them. They provide for you and all that. Yeah. So ethnic groups, um, we have, over 250 ethnic groups in Nigeria, and they are also known as tribes. Some people know them as tribes. So, but we have three major mm -hmm. ones, and they are Igbo, Hausa, and Yoruba. She's Yoruba, I'm Igbo, and then we have Hausas. And this picture right here, this is the Igbos, and that's typically how they dress for occasions and traditionally too. And that's the Yorubas, and this is the Hausas. Which one do you think looks best? Yep. You guys you know. Know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, um, about 80% are Igbos, Hausas and Fulanis are 29%, Yorubas are 21%, and others are 32%. The ethnic group has its own language and traditions and norms. That's what makes it special. For example, Aramida and I are from the same country, but we have different languages, different cultures, and different norms. The only way we can communicate is by speaking English and all that. So marriage between the two different ethnic groups is very, very uncommon. Uh, I just wanted to say, like, the typical Yoruba traditional wear consists of a gele, that's the head tie, uh, the buba, and that's like a top thing, then iro, it's like a wrapper, like just wrap around your waist, and the men typically wear a fila which is a cap on his head, and an agbada, and that's like a big gown that you kind of like just fold up. And it's one and thousand. Yeah. Thousand. You have to do this when you wear it. Yeah, you have to like. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and this is, um, you know, we wear beads too. It's very, very, very expensive. And for men, for men, they have to wear that hat when they're entitled chiefs. You can't just wear it if you're not a chief. It's a taboo. 
and the staff too, you have to earn it. Basically, most of the attires, you have to earn it before you wear it. And something common in my tribe is that the first male child is called the Diobara, and they are very, um, they have so many responsibilities. They don't just, because they're gonna inherit the father's business, land, properties, and all that, so they're, <coughs> they're big deals. And the first girl is called the Ada, I'm the first girl. We also have responsibilities. We're like the ones that will guide the rest of the children. You know, so we have to behave well, act, act well, and all that. Okay. So the languages in Nigeria, spoken in Nigeria, we have over 250 languages, and that's just because we have so many ethnic groups. But the official language is English, and that's because of the slave trade that went on and the colonialism. Um, but even though we uh, adopted the English, English from the British, we have a different accent because it's kind of mixed with our tribal accents and. But uh, if you compare our accent to that of the American accent, we still sound more British. Just like when you say 40, you guys say 40, right? 40? 40. 40. We say 40. 40. 40. Yeah, and water. <laughs> what? No, water. Um, and even in our country, we have different, like, even, like, if Precious speaks English and I speak English, you can kind of tell where we're from because we have different accents, too, in the same country. Uh, and then, yeah, the three major languages, just as the tribes are Igbo, Yoruba, and Hausa, and they sound very different. In my language, if you want to say, how are you, that's Igbo, you say, Kedu. And in her language, Yoruba, if you want to say, how are you, you say, Baoni. Exactly. And in Hausa, if you want to say, how are you, you say, Exactly that. So, uh, <laughs> and our names reflect our ethnicity too. Every Nigerian has a native name and some have English name. I have an English name and I have a native name too. My native name is Chine and it, it has meanings. Um, it has significant meanings. You know, you can be identified by your significant name. So, like, my name is Aramide and it translates to, like, my people are with me. And my grandma gave me this name because uh, when they gave birth to me, like, before they gave birth to me, her sisters, Two of her sisters died, like uh, two sisters, the only two she had. And then they gave birth to me, so I was kind of like her company that has come. So it's, uh, we have deep meanings to our names. And I also wanted to talk about the, you know we have 250 languages. A lot of them branch out from the three major ones. So we have more indigenous form of, my language, for example, Yoruba, we have more indigenous forms of it. So my grandma speaks, she doesn't speak the plain Yoruba. She speaks the more the indigenous form, and it's called Ijebu. Although I can understand her very well, but like uh, it's like really hard. So it would, like I literally break my teeth if I try to speak it. <laughs> so, yeah. So even though English is our official language, we have another English that we speak casually. It's English, <laughs> but it's not English. Mm. I don't know how to explain it, but um, <laughs> can you go to the next slide? It's called Pigeon. Pigeon English or broken English. So, for example, if you want to say how are you, you say how far. That's English, but it doesn't make sense to a normal American. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to say what, you say waiting, like waiting. And if you want to say please, you say I beg. I beg and I beg. So we're just, you know, we just make mm -hmm. that up. I'm hungry, I want chop. Don't be angry, no veg. Um, are you okay? You say well. I'm ready to eat. I want chop. My friend means my paddy. Uh, please means a bag. Do you know him or her? You said him. So it's like if you want to say, I want to dance, you say, I want dance. I want to eat. I want chop. I want to swim. I want to swim. I want to sit. What do you think it is? I want to sit. I want to sit. <laughs> yes, I want to sit. Good. So basically, uh, we speak it randomly, and that's like the only thing around there that I can understand. Pigeon English and yeah, it's like ghetto English. So, <laughs> <laughs> so greeting. Um, in my tribe, the more cultural or traditional way to for a man to greet is to prostrate in front of his elders, um, and for a lady, you're supposed to kneel in front of them. But like, due to like like you you can't just go around lying on the floor, you know. So this is a more um, modern way of doing it, yeah. but if it's like a very serious occasion, like a wedding or something, you have to like do this and
girls, like, we still kneel, but we try not to, like, get to the floor so your clothes don't, don't get dirty, so we kind of, like, just go down, yeah. but we don't go all the way. And you have to do it really fast, like, and she's done, and she's done. And, like, it's like you're doing press or push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> then religion. Um, religion is a big deal in my country. Um, barely no one is, um, you know, an atheist. We all believe in something. We have about 50% Christians, and they are Protestants and Catholics. We have about 49% Muslims, and the rest are traditionalists. And these are like the Christian. The churches, like they're all always filled up. We hold crusades and all of that. And some churches evolved from Nigeria, like Winner's Chapel, Christ Embassy, and so on. And that's like the Muslims. Uh, mostly they're dominated in the northern part of Nigeria. And um, the Christians are dominated in like the east of this. The east. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So the east. Mm -hmm. And then um Yorubas are like half mis like like half Muslims and half Christians. Okay, so weddings. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just think weddings are so beautiful in my country. <laughs> <laughs> so, wedding is such a big deal in my country. It's not just the bride and groom coming together. It's the bride's family and the groom's family coming together. So, um, it's very big. It's very expensive. The cost can, can range from like $10,000 uh, to as high as $300,000, but you get like it's the rich people that will do that. Um, so, like, you just don't invite your close friends and family. You know, like here, you can have 100 guests. We're talking about we're talking about 500 to 1,000 guests because you invite your extended family and they invite their friends <laughs> and like people you don't even know. You can't control it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's very beautiful. They're it's blown out like full blown out affair of bright colors, good music, tradition. And I just wanted to go through the process of getting married in my country. So the first stage is the introduction ceremony and like okay. Two people have been, like, a, bride, a girl and a boy have been courting for a while, and they're, like, ready to take it to the next step. So they have the introduction ceremony, and that's when their families meet. It's very dramatic. Like, they literally have, like, one side here, one side here, the bride's family here, the groom's side family here, and they, like, face each other and just look. And the groom's family is the one who goes to the bride's um, house because they're going to ask for their daughter. So they bring a letter, and they can come with gifts. And from wine and stuff. Like so uh, it's kind of like the, the gifts are kind of like a peace offering. Um, so the bride's family will decide if they want them or not. And if they do, they'll go ahead and give them a list. And this is called the uh, dowry. Bride so price. Bride price, basically. So Very expensive. <laughs> that takes us to the next stage, the engagement. And the engagement, the groom's family is supposed to bring the dowry, like the bride price, and this can range from like material, like clothes, um, drinks, um, uh, food items, cow, cow, gold, can be gold, cars. They can cow, even ask for cars. Rice. Like, and the groom <laughs> family has to. The groom family has to bring this. If not, they won't get the, yeah. the, the daughter. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's not cheap. It like literally makes the groom family go bankrupt. And the whole the, <laughs> the whole idea of this is that the bride is not cheap; that she's of great value, and um, she wants to, uh, and can only be given to someone worthy of her. So after the introduction, if everything goes well, then uh, sorry, after the engagement, if everything goes well, then they get engaged. Then they they have. Most people have two weddings. They have the religious wedding, which is like the white weddings that you guys have. Or if they're Muslims, they have the Nikai wedding. And they can either have this on one day and then have the traditional wedding on another day, or they might have it both or on the same day, but like the first one in the morning and the second one in the afternoon. afternoon. But the traditional weddings are so pretty. Like they, the bride and groom dress so pretty. And that's more of an evil culture, right? Oh, yeah. In my culture, we the girl has to go to her dad, and then her dad is going to present her with that. That's like a traditional cup made of, um, made of wood. 
and they have to, the dad has to pour palm wine on it and bless it to her for her and then she carries it and dances and they have to, people have to hide her husband somewhere she can't see and then she has to find the husband dancing with the thing and you know her bridesmaids following her around and all that and then when she finds her husband she has to kneel before him and give him the palm wine and he, she has to drink first and he drinks and he puts money in there and then, <laughs> and then later on they can do the white wedding if they want if they're you know christians or if they believe in it if not, they can like start having babies from there. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to show how the halls look. They, it, it's a lot of money. They make it look very pretty. And this also depends on the person's, uh, the class the person is from. But it's full blown. I have a video. Oh. Oh. Like a video of the, my travel wedding. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can just. <laughs> And that's why you buy many people, right? That's <laughs> cool. <laughs> food. We have a variety of food. So many types of food. Uh, if I start to like put everything here, it wouldn't even fit in the slide. So I selected like a few of them. First, I have to begin by saying that jollof rice is dope. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. We can't like a lot of countries try to compete with Nigeria for jollof rice. I don't know why they do that. They can't give us that credit. But we have the best jollof rice in the whole, in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so jollof rice is made from rice, of course, and um, you know we're tomato. gonna make it on a taste test. Yes, taste test fair. So you have to come. So you can make it, uh, you know, with vegetables and then with any kind of animal you want, like chicken or beef or whatever. It's very, very good. It takes you to heaven. <laughs> and then you have um, pap and akara. <coughs> this is awesome. It's like usually 
breakfast it's more of breakfast than lunch and this akara is made from beans ground beans and uh, fried with some spices and you know other things and that's pap from pap from corn. Corn, yes. <laughs> and oh. um, that's pepper soup. <laughs> very, <laughs> pepper soup is very, very spicy. If you don't like spicy food, please Carmen don't has tried it. Soup. Did you like it? <laughs> so uh, it comes with all kinds of meat, not all kinds, but you know, beef, cow, um, organs. Yes, all that. And then this is egg, this is fufu. And for those of you in Kenya, this is fufu. <laughs> <laughs> so last time, uh, some people were going yeah. to McDonald's and I asked them to get, they asked me what can I get for it, I said fufu, but they were like, what's fufu? So this is fufu, it comes, uh, it's made out of cassava, that's the white one, and then this is the soup, that's egusi soup, you can eat fufu with so many kinds of soups, um, but that's egusi soup, and that's cow skin, cow, nice. cow intestine, yeah, we eat that a lot, it's called shaki, it's very, very good and, you know, healthy, and uh, this is, it they would do it. Yeah, that's their food. And Amala. Amala. This is my grandma's best food. It's really good. <laughs> and it's really hard. It's literally born in your hand if you don't wait for it to get <laughs> When I visited Orea, it's in their house. It's really good. So this is moi moi. It's also made from beans, but it's baked, baked beans. And then that's egg inside there. Uh, this is beans and plantains. Um, plantains, like bananas, but they're plantains. And that's vegetable soup. Very, very good. Oh, noodles. Hmm. You can beat us with noodles. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have um, Indomie. It's like Nigerian noodles. Very, very, very good. I, I have one pack of Indomie. I'll give it to somebody who gives me a hug after the presentation. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's very, very oh good. Um, <laughs> and then, I miss everything. So these are like snacks. Uh, this is Puff Puff. Noella makes very, very good Puff Puffs. <laughs> And then this is meat pie. Um, you have the meat in there, and it's like, what's it like? It's like, it's baked. Yeah, it's usually baked. And that's chin chin. It's a Nigerian snack. It's made from dough, and then you cut it up and fry it. That is maize and corn. My favorite. <coughs> Show it, sorry. Uh, this is corn, and that is pear. We call it ube in my native language. I don't know how to explain it. It's a fruit, but it's not here. And <laughs> tropical fruit. Yes. Peanuts. Yeah. This peanuts. is peanuts. Sorry. But we call it burger. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. And this is gala, sausage roll. Gala is one oh of my the most gala. popular ones. Popular snack in Nigeria. If you go to Nigeria, you don't eat gala, you haven't been to Nigeria. <laughs> so we have a video of Americans trying Nigerian food. And people who don't know that are wrong. All the best foods are eaten with your hands. Everyone knows that. And people who don't know that are wrong. I've never had Nigerian food. I've always wanted to try it. I'm excited. This meat's a little chewy, which I really like. It tastes like spaghetti. It does. Like better than spaghetti. It's like if sweet potato fries had a cousin, and that cousin was better. <laughs> the lady back here wonderfully explained that it's very customary to do this, which makes sense because you're eating from your hand. Okay, air pro. I just chewed. I watched other people do it. All the times in America, we get so used to just like fork and knives kind of shoving it into your mouth all the time. Whereas like this is just more of like a full-on experience. All the best foods are eaten with your hands. Yeah. Is there a fishiness I detect? A little. I, I get that too. It's like tangy, sharp. It tastes like tofu-ish. Kind of like it's like really starchy, overcooked rice and like a mashed potato. But with this together, it has so much more flavor. I love all meats on sticks. I've never had a meat on stick <laughs> I didn't like. It's like a powdery flavor on the outside. Very beef jerky-ish also. It's one of those things where it's like, it is hot, but as you keep eating it, you just kind of burn off your like feelers a bit, so it's <laughs> easier to eat it. It's like addicting like hot Cheetos. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is really opening up my sinuses. It's <laughs> knocked me out of my food coma. <laughs> it's a lot of like 
It's like salty and spicy. Like the Midwestern in me wants to get like a big ass roll and just like dunk it. I'm not a big seafood guy, but this is like a good level of fishiness. I also can tell that they roast the peppers beforehand, which is really great. Give it some great like deep flavor. I'm sweating. Wow. <laughs> it like hits you in a way of uh, heat. I can speak. It's kind of comforting. It's comforting. For sure comforting, yeah. Well, this was delicious. I had a great time eating all of that, and I wish it was more mainstream so I could eat that jollof rice anywhere. It was so good. A lot of our cultures around the world, especially food-wise, have stemmed from there, and I feel like it's just what a great experience that we're missing out on. You saw the guy using his both his hands to eat the the one he ate with your hand. The foo -foo. Yeah, the foo -foo. You don't want to do that. You want to use just one hand. That is oh, too much. <laughs> <laughs> and it go it, it goes really tight. Like you know, we're so used to it. So you ball it up just like a Bella, but we have to use all our hands. Just, so you ball it up and then you take it with the soup and swallow. Don't you? Like you say, swallow. It goes inside your throat. <laughs> That's different from our tribe though, because we don't rub it. We don't like ball it up. We the way we eat it, this place has to be clean, so you kind of like cut it, then just like mold it with this, and then create a hole in it, then swallow. Oh but they, you ball it up, but your hand doesn't get dirty. Oh, your hand not get dirty. It does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so famous Nigerian. Uh, here are some of the famous Nigerians. You guys know Wale. Wale. Mm -hmm. um, he is very popular in the uh, rap. Um, this is Michael Boyega. He's in the recent uh, Star Wars movie, and he's also getting his own movie, Pacific Rim. John Boyega. <laughs> 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 and this is Chiwetele Ejiofor. He is a uh, very po is a very popular uh, Hollywood British. I thought, I thought it was British. Nigerian British. Yeah. 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 Um, he was in Twelve Years a Slave, and this is Jidena. From like he sang the song Classic Man. I'm a classic man. Yeah. Yeah. And this and this is Teju Cole. is a writer, photographer. He's also very influential, and his books are actually read in a lot of schools in Nigeria. And that's around me. This cousin. Yeah, that's like me. And that is Osita. Cute. He plays in the NFL. Um, he's very famous. Do you all know him? I know him. <laughs> 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 He also plays uh, in, the, in the NFL. And this is, are you familiar with Orange is the New Black? Mm -hmm. That is, she's, she's from my tribe. She's Uzo. Um, yeah, pretty much. We have so many famous people that are, you know, famous here now and famous in um, every other part of the world due to we travel a lot. And then when we go to somewhere, sometimes we decide because we blend easily everywhere. Most, so we just stay there and become famous. <laughs> And these are some other popular people. This is Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I love her. She's a very, um, she's a strong feminist. She is a writer. She wrote um, a couple of good books. Um, Americana. Americana, Purple Half Hibiscus, Half of a Yellow Sun. Um, and if you guys know the song, Beyonce's song, Flawless, there's one part where one woman was talking and she was like, we teach our girls to string them. You yeah, know, like, she was the one saying that. And this <coughs> is Wale Shoyinka is a is a po is a story writer, what do you call it? Yeah. Play writer, play writer. Mm. And he has a Nobel Prize in literature. And this man is just smiling, right? This is the richest man in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> he is he is like and I really like him because he is a self made. Like him he has no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I just like that he built himself up and he's the richest person in Africa. <laughs> He's worth, I think, seventeen billion. His name is Dangote. Aliko Dangote, and he's into like a, a like a cement trade, building materials yes. and stuff. And he has like businesses all across Africa. And this is Genevieve Energy. She's a world star, um, Nollywood actress, and she is very famous, right? And she, you know, classy. She has been interviewed in CNN, BBC, all over. And I just thought I should put uh, this across. This is Keichi Ouchi. She um, she's the only survivor of the. Oh, yeah.
yeah, so, so yeah, plane crash. There was a plane crash in Nigeria in 2005, and she was a high school. It's the same person. Mm. This was before and after. So she was um, um, in this plane crash, and she was the only survivor, and she had up to 100 surgeries, but she made it to that level, and she was, um, you know, flown here and given treatments and everything, and she participated in America's Got Talent, I think two years ago, last year, and she made it to the finals, but she didn't make it, you know, but she made it to the finals, so, so I thought I should talk about her. Nollywood. <laughs> I think you only have Hollywood. We have Nollywood too. Uh, Nigeria music, um, movie industry. Uh, it's a very major entertainment in Nigeria. It goes all around the world, not just in Africa. We have um, so many stories. Like our stories are based off of real life stories, mostly like cults, witchcraft, heartbreak, <laughs> and sorrow. Um, we talk more, we do, I mean, we act more of, you know, real life stories than fictions, like superpowers and all that. And then most of the stories feature, like, yeah, I've said that before. And it's, it has developed into Africa's giant filmmaking. So the other day, uh, at the basement, I used to organize a movie night, and then we watched, um, the wedding party. yeah, the wedding party. It was oh, really cool. awesome. It was cool, right? Yeah. yeah. And I just wanted to say that they're very dramatic. But they'll make you laugh. So yeah. there's a lot of them on Netflix too. Just Google, just search Nigerian movies. I'm pretty sure you find a lot of them. Okay. So. And the music as well. You know, Nigerian music has gone all over the world. A lot of people play it, and we uh, know some of them, like T Square, Shekinini, and Bankala. They did it. They're twin speed and four. And that's the video. Money follow you. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> and this is flavor. And whiskey, whiskey, and the video are Yorubas, and these two are Igbos from my tribe. Um, and the music usually features all ethnic groups, and um, it's it rates number one uh, in <coughs> Africa. And then we have traditional songs, hip hop, R and B, jazz, etc. And then most of the songs have specific dance steps that go with it, you know, like Shaki, you know, <laughs> like that. And then Skeleu, and which other one? I mean, well, they, they all have different dances that go with them. So that when you're dancing, when you're listening to the song, you know, okay, I'm supposed to do this and not this. So. <laughs> and I just wanted to mention that Whiskey is very popular. It's mm -hmm. the most popular one in Nigeria. And he sang a song with uh, Drake, yeah, Closer. Yeah. Uh, square is popular too. Oh, I mean, <laughs> 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 uh, he, he's from her tribe, so she's trying to... She's trying to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so sports in Nigeria is basically football, like that, we have other sports, but this is a major one, and we call it football, and here they call it soccer. Yeah. Um, this is our team, the Super Eagles, and they're very good. We're very, Nigeria, we love football. It's, yeah. It brings everybody together. And here are some tourists. Um, locations. We have a lot of beautiful um, beach. <laughs> uh, I always say that wrong, so I do not want to say it wrong. <laughs> Beaches? Yeah, so this is one of the popular ones. It's called the uh, Coconut Beach. In, uh, <laughs> and it's really beautiful. Then we have a lot of uh, wildlife parks. And there are a lot of animals, so if you guys are into stuff like that, or just like hiking, we have a lot of, um, what do you call it, like hiking, places you can hike. We have a lot of forest area. Uh, mm. Mountain. Yes, so you can do that. <laughs> and then, as you can tell, our country is very cultural, so we have um, shrine places, so uh, they're like entertainment centers, and they play the old type of music. Not, it's very groovy, but uh, it's more of the older type of music. And then we have a lot of um, heritage sites like this one. This is a uh, Oshun Sacred Groove, and it's one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And then I also wanted to say something about these elephants. Like you don't see elephants in the streets. Yeah. That completely. <laughs> don't. They're always in the zoo. They don't come out. Or in the <laughs> park. Exactly. I haven't even seen an elephant before in my entire life. So I don't know why people think when you go to Africa you see elephants mm. and lions walking in the trees.
Located on the western shores of Africa, Nigeria is a welcoming country which promises a fascinating experience for everyone. Welcome to Abuja, the capital of the country. Here you will discover Nigeria's religious and cultural diversity. While enjoying the many international hotels, offering first-rate hospitality and the top-of-the-class business facilities. Step into the exciting city of Lagos, a place where tradition and modernity come together. Considered Africa's own Big Apple, the city is home to luxurious hotels and some of the best shops and restaurants in the country. Enjoy the unique nightlife and thriving music scene of one of the most vibrant cities on earth. Rediscover relaxation in Nigeria's southern state to Aqua Ibo. Enjoy the finest hospitality at Le Meridien Hotel and Golf Resort, where the lush greens of the world class 18 hole golf course and its unique location in the middle of the jungle will ensure a lifetime of memories. Discover the beautiful city of Canada, capital of the Cross River State, a lovely and peaceful place located on the southeast coast. Immerse yourself in the local traditions and get in touch with Nigeria's rich cultural history through the many festivals around the country. Take a trip through the mountain forest, where the Obudu Mountain Resort plays host to luxury travels and some of the most important conventions in Africa, and bear visit to the Alfie Mountain Wildlife Reserve. A rainforest sanctuary where you can see some of the most endangered species alive. A country with 170 million people. Africa's biggest market. Extraordinary. Fascinating. Nigeria. <laughs> We just wanted to talk about some fun facts about our country. Um, oh yes, so Nigeria was named after a river Niger, um, and Nigeria has the longest bridge in Africa. By gaining prize, we bargain prize a lot. For example, if a businessman tells you that laptop is like, for, uh, let's say, a thousand dollars, you'd be like, no, can you give me five hundred? And he'd be like, no. 600 and all that until you get probably you end up selling it for like three hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> So uh, we call Nigeria Niger. We you know casually say Niger. So and that's Niger pigeon. Girl. Yeah, that's, that's pigeon. pigeon. For Nigeria. So, mm -hmm. so Niger girl, Niger boy, you know. Uh, Nigerians are very loud and cheerful. Oh my gosh, we are very drunk. You need to see my mom and her sisters together. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like we make a lot of noise, you know, when necessary. And um, but we're in general, we're very happy to, like, even with the economy of my country, we still manage to be happy. Like, we're just happy people. Yeah. <laughs> there's something we say in Nigeria, Nigeria no they carry last, that's pigeon. It means Nigeria don't, you know, take the last position in anything. Like, even if, even if we find ourselves in situations where we can't handle, like if you ask the question and you don't know the answer, we'll never say, no, I don't know the answer. Well, we have to try answering wrong or, you know, the same things. And we'll f surely get there. So Nigeria they carry last. And then there is this thing about money. Like Igbo men, my tribe, unfortunately, we love money so much. <laughs> the only way you can wake, know if an Igbo man is really dead or alive is by just put money around. <laughs> and if he, if he wakes up, then that means you know he's not dead. But if he's still sleeping, you know he's dead. So that is just the common yeah. thing they say. And it's rude to walk in between people having a conversation. I just wanted to put that out there because that happened, I think, between uh, Miss Stephanie and Miss Tana, and they were talking, and like that was the only space left. And I was like, oh, I know I can't like pass it, but they're like, oh, go, go. But in my country, it's considered very rude, so I don't like walking in between people talking. Like, if to, I'll rather go behind them, even if there's no space, I'll literally like squeeze myself <laughs> behind. So that's just a cultural thing. Our parents usually use idioms and proverbs while, while addressing us most of the time. 
and it baffles me because instead of going straight to the point, they'll be like, um, the lion told me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll be like, uh, they use animals and other things to say something. For example, if an ant bites you during like a certain time of the day, like the afternoon in your leg or something like that, like, you know, it's just like to, um, it's very deep. But if you know the translation, you're good to go. If you don't, you have to find, you know, the translation. And half the time, we don't even know what it means. Yeah. <laughs> like proverbs, I mean, the ones I know are in my native tongue, so you guys won't understand it. But there's one that, um, if you pound, like, you know the thing we eat with our hands? If you pound it in, like, a very small container, and if you put the soup in, like, a, you know, peanut shell, that whoever will be satisfied will be satisfied. I'm like, what? <laughs> so, like, they say something like, um, that means, like, if one finger takes the palm oil, or oil, like oil, it will be enough for the everybody. I don't get it. But <laughs> they have the translations, and, you know, it really makes sense. So, um, they say it makes you wiser. <laughs> Okay, I wanted to talk about this one because I'm a lefty. So we don't use our left hand to collect things from people and we also don't use it to eat. But I'm a left-handed person. So like instinctively, I want to use my left hand, but I have gotten into so much trouble from trying to use my left hand to collect things from people. Like literally trying to collect something, people just like smack my hand like that. <laughs> but yeah, over the years, I've kind of trained myself to use my right hand. But like I use my left hand to eat. And I remember my grandma, like anytime I'm eating, like we're in like a big family table thing, she would just like keep staring at me and I'm like, oh, this woman should leave me alone. Like she would literally <laughs> stare at me till I finish that food. Like because the left hand is considered the dirty hand, but the thing is that my right hand is my dirty hand, you know? So <laughs> but I'm glad my parents are like the way they are and they didn't try to force me to change with my right hand, which, which they do a lot in my country. If you're a lefty, they'll try, they'll force you when you're young to change to your right hand. And it, it really messes people up because um, a lot of them have like ugly looking angiotin when they try to use their right hand, uh, but that's just how they have it. Force you to change? What? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my parents didn't force me to change, so I'm really grateful for that. And their pronunciation. Voila. So we have, um, you know, because of our mother tongue, English, we speak English, it's our official language, but we have our mother tongues, like our native languages that we learned first before English. So because of that, our pronunciations are, you know, different, and that's why we have accents, and people say, you know, you have accents, that's because we have mother tongues first. And so, like, water, we don't say water, we say water. water. And we don't say chocolate, we say chocolate. <laughs> and, you know, so many other things, like, uh, what else? You said that before, 20? We don't say 20, 20 we say 20. And all that. So, but uh, I also wanted to say that we don't look elders in their eyes. Like it's rude in my country to just stare at an elderly person. It's kind of like you're challenging them. So we don't look people straight in their eyes um, when, we're when we're talking to them. And uh, especially when you're being schooled, that don't even look at your parents in their eyes. Like you want, you get in so much trouble. But. Um, I found that quite challenging coming here because, like, I think in America, it's, it's yeah, you have to look people yeah. in their eyes, yeah. and I, I wasn't used to that at first, so it made me feel like I was shy, it made me, made people think I was, just, yeah. I was on the shy side, but it was just, like, it's tradition for us. There was a time Miss Ellen was trying to talk to me about something, and I was like this, and she was like, precious, look at me, and I was like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's very normal for parents to curse out children, you know, like, when you do something wrong and your parents call you idiot, you know, stupid, <laughs> it's very, very normal. If you go to Nigeria and you, you know, encounter that, please don't take it, you know, serious or anything like that. It's what we're good with that, you know, it's okay. You can call me whatever you want to call me, it's fine. And um, we don't take it serious. I also wanted to say we have the highest rate of, we have one of the highest rate of fraternal, fraternal twins in the world. And that's because of a, a food we eat. It's a yam. It's kind of, it looks like a potato, but it's bigger. And I heard that it has something in it that makes, I don't know, that just makes people have twins. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, we have a lot of twins in my country, but they're fraternal, not identical. And comedy is a, very, is a major form of entertainment in Nigeria. We have a lot of comedians. Uh, they do it for business, and they do it a sort of, you know, living for, um, what, what's it called? Living? Yeah. So, we're, you know... 
And half of the Nigerian population are you know, comedians because you can never be around a Nigerian and you don't laugh for five minutes. That's true, right? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> 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 Do you guys have any questions? Uh, does Nigeria also do the YAC exams? Yes. Oh, yeah. They do? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We do a general exam like after high school or during high school. Kind of like right how you go to ACT. Yeah. Yeah, mm. just like ACT. We do YAC exam, West African Examination Council. Yeah, I didn't and know if that was part of it. Right after that, we do JAM, Joint, something, something. Yeah. <laughs> I left Nigeria again. Okay. <laughs> any other questions? Are you sure? Okay. So we have uh, questions for you guys, and if anyone, the first position. Oh, wait. What? Uh, okay. So the f we have this Denshiki, but it's not it's not here right now. But I'll get it before next week. It's on so the way. the first person has a chance of winning this kind of. Stuff. Yeah. So Shiki. and then the second person gets. Um, Not this beats, they are very expensive. Just <laughs> 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 you get, um, you know, this Quixote says African has a map and he has a, a dowry. A, is it cowrie or dowry? Oh, cowrie. Oh. Yeah, cowrie. So, yeah. Okay. So, first question. Yeah. Okay, so how we're doing it is the first person to raise their hand. Like, nobody should just, like, try to blurt out the answer, the answer but not the <laughs> Okay, so... What are the what? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> what are the three major tribes in Nigeria? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> say one more time. Say one okay. more time. Nigerians. Let's change the question. I think that was too easy. That was too easy. That was too easy. Oh, wait, you can't answer your name. <laughs> okay. What's the uh, federal capital territory? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Alex, I th was it Alex? Yeah, Abuja is Alex. Yeah, I'm not here with that. already. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You know what? Any more? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that. Let's do it like again. <laughs> do another question. Okay. Oh my God, I don't know what's going on. Where are we going? Oh. Uh, I'll try to make it harder, harder so that. Uh, Okay, what? what is the <laughs> what is the Nigerian currency? Oh. Alex, please, you know what, Alex, you're Alex. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Carol. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you get it, you can. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm the back. <laughs> so the second question, uh, who is the president of Nigeria? What? You got happy in the front. Wow. Muhammad Buhari. Okay. You're right. You know what? Gustav, Nick, all of you, I'll get you guys something, okay? I get, I get the noodles. <laughs> but thank you all so much for coming.